previously on Dungeon of the Mad Mage. The party had bested the Xanathar agents of the Dead Eyes watch post. The battle had left the party victorious, but wounded. They decided to rest within the watch post itself. Unbeknownst to them, another small group of bugbears was nearby, hidden behind a secret wall. When the party's guard was lowered, the bugbears, bugbears, the bugbears sprung their trap. The ensuing battle was short but vicious, with Bones nearly losing his life. Fortunately, the party was able to make the best of the situation. Afterwards, they searched the now-revealed hidden chambers to find yet another mysterious portal. This one opened by touching it with ferrous metal, which then turned to rust. The party also found an ancient dwarven armory, stuffed with hidden loot and a magic wand. Still injured and now burdened with plunder, the party headed back out of the dungeon, stopping by the goblin market long enough for Bones to have terse words with Pibble and Groin. A short journey later, and the party once again breathed fresh, though cold, air. The freeze had come to Waterdeep right on time, and the party now found themselves in an icy winter wonderland. After taking the time to run errands and deal with some downtime activities, the party spent the night in the comfortable luxury of their home at Trollskull Manor. The following morning of Uktar the 22nd was cold and bitter, and though there was some debate over whether the party should gather their strength further, ultimately, the decision was made to head back into Undermountain. At the yawning portal, the party underwent their usual preparations, with the morning crowd placing bets and making typical banter with what were now being considered regular adventurers of Undermountain. During this, the party heard tale of a foul issue <clears throat> upon the first floor of the dungeon. Some magical function was producing seemingly endless hordes of rotting fare, flesh of both creature and plant. The disgusting enchantment was without end, and the plague of flies and maggots it had brought forth were causing real problems with the already undead infested northern portion of the first level. But this was an issue for others to handle, at least for now. The party had further business down in the arcane chambers, so down down the party ventured, not quite to Goblin Town though. First, they headed to the magic archway they had discovered in the clean magic candle halls. Here, they were intent on seeing if the wand of magic missiles they had newly acquired would activate the magic gate. And indeed, it did, though at some cost to the wand's power. And once again, the party was unable to actually utilize the portal. However, this time, who or whatever it was that was stopping them was a bit more understanding, actually warning them that they shouldn't use the portals until they found the corresponding ones below. This knowledge in hand, they headed down to the second floor of the dungeon intent on exploring the areas they had previously been unable to, given time, oh, unable to give time, sorry, to while, uh, while Halith Gark was with them. They found themselves at a barred door northwest of the old water pump, behind which a muttering chanting could be heard. Ashes and Metashtai came at the door with a portable ram, and after once, twice, thrice, the door burst open, revealing a barricaded room in the center of which stood a small alchemical lab. And there, a creature made of wood and canvas stood. A shoddy gray cloak wrapped around it, dozens of cloth eyes sewn upon it. A bizarre puppet of Halister Black Cloak. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like, commenting, or subscribing. It really helps me out. If you'd like to see me live, head over to my Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash the distant horizon.